Hello, hello again. So today I wanted to kind of talk about a bunch of different ways you can use auto hotkeys to manipulate your folders and files and whatnot. So just file manipulation, I guess we could call it. So if you guys like what you see in this video, definitely subscribe because I do multiple ones of these every week in just different categories, INI files, GUIs, just basic intro stuff. So definitely comment below if there's something you are interested in seeing a video of. I always like to try to go off what people have in mind that they're looking for. Alright, let's go ahead and jump in some code. So the first one I want to talk about is file admin, which is this line here. What that's going to do is if the file doesn't already exist at this location down here, it's going to actually go ahead and create it for me. It's then going to insert whatever text I have here. You don't have to put the text here. You can have it as a variable, which is just uh, something like this variable. And it would save whatever this variable is assigned to. So if I had variable hello up here, it would put that into the document. But for now, I'm just going to stick with the text actually being on this line of code. So in the lines here you'll see that I have a tilde in. That's just saying start a new line, a line break. So instead of this being one long line, it's going to be two for me. Uh, just using the built-in variable here, a desktop, this path can be whatever you need it to be. If you want it to go to your documents, all that kind of stuff. I want it to be called test and I want it to be a text file. And you can change this to like a Word document or something, depending on what your needs are. So let's go ahead and try that first part of the code out. So currently don't have this folder or file on my desktop, so I'm going to push F1. And there, I'll pull it over. So it just created that. And if we open it up, there's my text. Just dance till you drop. New line, and just keep doing it. Now, if I use this multiple times, it will um, will not replace this text. It will just keep adding on. So let me go ahead. I'm going to push F1. I'll push it a few times here. Now I'm going to open that. And as you see, it just kept pasting in it, the same thing over and over again. So it doesn't replace the text. It just keeps adding on to it. All right. Um, the second one I have here, it's the exact same thing as up here. It's just a little bit easier to read what I wanted to say here. So you're just doing the same thing as up here. File a pen, comma. But then you're just going to put all your text in these brackets here. And then followed by your uh, file path location that you wanted to save to. So it's just, they, they do the exact same thing. It's just two different layouts depending on what you like better. Normally, I like doing this because then I can see all my code and all my text. But over here, if I, you know, this was really long. You know, I'm sitting there then scrolling. I like to just be able to see all my text at once without having to scroll. So I prefer this way, but to each his own. So file to F1 and F2, exact same thing. Cool. Now, let's say I actually want to move a file. So that's just file move. Where is the original location? So it's going to search for my desktop old folder, and it's going to look for that test document, and then here's where I want it to go. Make sure you separate by a comma, obviously. Now when it does move, you can have it be renamed at the same time. So the original folder or file name is called test. I want it to be switched over to test move. So let's go ahead and try that out. So here I got my old folder. I'm going to put that test document in there, and I want to go from this folder to this folder. I'm just going to go ahead and launch that script and press F1 and you just saw that it blinked and it's over here and it's been renamed to test move. It's a great way. I use this a lot for backing up stuff. If I haven't, you know, I need to replace a file, I can just click a button and it's going to move that old file over and just call it, you know, whatever backup. That's what I use it for at least. If you guys have any other useful ideas for that, definitely let me know, because I'm always liking to learn new tricks with what I show you guys. So the next one is file recycle. So let's say I'm just done with that uh, file in this new folder. 
I wanted to move it to my recycling bin. Once it moves to my recycling bin, you have file recycle empty, and you just say the C drive. There's no need to put a path there, because that's the only place I have a recycling bin on my computer. And that's just going to delete it. So let's go ahead and try that out. So new folders there. I'll move my recycling bin over here. So it's empty. Just to prove it. That's still in there. So I'm going to go ahead and push F2. As you saw, my recycling bin just filled up. There's nothing in here anymore. So now I want to empty my recycling bin. I'm just going to push F3. And now it's empty. Now something to remember with a lot of these commands that I'm showing you, especially these three, is it really kind of depends sometimes if these are going to work on your computer or not. If you're using a home computer and you're the admin, they're most likely going to work just fine. They have no problems with me. But when I go to my work and I try to do commands like this, the antivirus programs and whatnot that IT has set up, they don't like these running, and a lot of times if I try, it'll shut my script down. Because that's actually how viruses work a lot, is they try to copy themselves into the system in different locations. And then they'll slowly start trying to delete, uh, you know, anything important, like deleting your documents, all that kind of stuff. So if you got, like, your security going, some of these might not work. You can always try switching it... Uh, by compiling it to a ex executable and see if that works and then also try running it as an administrator that might work but you know if you're especially at a company with pretty strict security some of these probably just there's nothing you're going to be allowed to do IT is going to say no to you for sure because that just opens you guys up to a lot of problems if you have someone who accidentally gets a virus Big no-no. So, with the uh, file moves that I was showing you here, there is actually one other. I'm not going to show you that one. I'll just explain the code. And that's file move direct. And this is going to do the exact same as file move, but it's going to be for moving a folder and everything that's in that folder. So if you want to move everything in your documents to a new folder, you can set that up where it clicks and it's going to move every single file. That way you don't have to make like 30 file moves for every single file. You can just move everything that's in there no matter what. And you can also use it to move it to a new drive. So if you just want to move all your pictures over to a external hard drive, you can create a script using this line to do something like that at a click of a button. Definitely a really cool thing to do. I do that with my picture folder quite a bit when I want to do backups. All right. Now let's say you actually want to read what's in a file. That's just file read. I've done doc uh, videos on INI files. It's kind of the same idea, but with an INI file, you're looking for a specific variable, a specific line, where this is just going to read the entire document for you, which can be helpful also. So I'm going to have it read a file I got here. Read me, please. And it just says, this is a test, nothing but a test. And then I'm just going to have it uh, throw up a message box for me so that I can see that it actually worked. And I'm just using that output variable that's right there. Obviously, I got my file path. So let's go ahead and try that one out. So I'm going to push F1. And there's my little message box. This is a test, nothing but a test. Uh, something to remember with this is if you are trying to read a document that's pretty large, a variable can store quite a bit of data. But you got to remember, as more text is entered into these message boxes, it just gets bigger and bigger. And it can get to the point where if it's such a big variable being stored that you got the top of the box up here, but then it stretches so far down your screen that it actually starts going off your screen. And that can be a problem because then your OK button, you know, it might be like this where I'm just like, oh, I can't get to it. And then I'm going to have to 
basically control shift escape to close this program because it's basically stuck here because there's too much text. So it can display a lot of text, but just be careful if you start getting really long, it might cause some problems for you. File get time. This is useful if you want to look at the last time a text file was modified. That way, if you want to say like, hey, if a file has been changed in the last X amount of hours, I want it to go ahead and create a backup. Um, so that's going to spit out some interesting code, which you'll see here in a minute. Um, but once again, I'll put variable, your file path, and I'm just going to have a message box. So I'm going to read that same file that I was up there, but I'm reading the time. So F2, there we go. So you can actually format this. I am going to talk later in another video about how to do a bunch of formatting and stuff. But as you can kind of see here, it breaks down to 2020, November 20th, and then the last few parts here are the hour, minutes, and seconds from when it was last updated. So this is a great way for using some kind of like backup system. That's what I've used it for at least. But this can be formatted, which is a simple formatting code. Or you can do a string split, which I talked about in my last video. If maybe you only want the date, or maybe you only want the time, you can string split this to get what you want. Uh, another good one is if file exists. Uh, this is helpful for saying, like, okay, if a file does not exist, I want you to then create this, pull data, save it into there, maybe, or whatever you want to do. Or if the file does exist, maybe do nothing, because it's already there. I'm not concerned. So where I put these message boxes, that's where you're going to kind of put your code for based off what you want it to do. So that's where you guys are going to be playing around a lot with. So once again, file exists my file path uh, with an if function put in file path there definitely make sure you put it in quotations or you'll spit out an error because it basically thinks this is an illegal character right here it's not going to recognize that unless you put it into parentheses so same file we know it exists is on my desktop right here so I'm push F3 does it exist it does it does but let's go ahead and delete that throw in my recycling so now I'm going to push F3 again. Does it exist? And there we go. So now it's saying that it did not find that. Uh, it just showed a pop-up saying that it did. Uh, I guess that just might be with something with my Windows computer just being slow to... Yeah, something's definitely being a little weird with my uh, thing here. As you see, that was messed up. So I think it just maybe was a little slow on my side. Why that first pop-up came up saying it was, it just didn't recognize that I had moved it yet. Probably time to upgrade my computer, I guess. It's been a few years. So yeah, um, as always, I will post this code in the description below. If you guys have any questions uh, to expand on this, I'll definitely be ready to answer them in the next few days. And if you guys want to see me expand on this in any way, or something maybe related, or you watched some of my other videos and you liked what you saw, definitely let me know in any of the comments on any of the videos, and I will expand on anything. Alright guys, have a great night. See you later. Oh, actually one last thing I did want to point out with the file get time. There's actually a few different versions of this, um, just to show you two of them that I use quite a bit. There is file get size, so how big is that file, you know, kilobytes, megabytes, or the version. Uh, what version is that? That's also very good to use in updating. Has the version changed? Let's go ahead and get that last version, move it to another backup folder or something. I just want to point that out. There's a few more. I don't really use them. I, these are pretty much the only three that I ever really see anybody use. So, sorry about that. Just want to throw that in at the end. Once again, good night.